This video is part four in our series of 300 dental anatomy facts that if you know you're going to do really good on the test and uh, this is going to be about the premolars. We're going to start on the maxillary first premolar. Okay, so the maxillary first premolar has the most pronounced developmental marginal groove of any maxillary tooth. And we're just going to build on that on the next point. It has a mesial concavity that makes it difficult to adapt a matrix band. So these are two different things. Okay, so here we see the developmental marginal groove coming down and it creeps down here. But on the mesial, if you looked under this marginal ridge, there's a depression, there's a concavity. So if you were to try to adapt a Toffelmeyer band around there, it might make it a little bit difficult. The, the cervical cross-section of the maxillary first premolar exhibits a kidney-shaped root outline, kind of like a kidney bean. So this uh, line here it represents uh, what this would look like in cross-section. So we've got a little bit of a kidney bean shape here, and that's because uh, of the mesial concavity. So if you were to take this and kind of superimpose it over this occlusal view, that's what it would look like because of this mesial concavity. And then uh, also kind of a similar idea, it exhibits a kidney-shaped pulp chamber floor. Okay, the non-molar tooth that most frequently exhibits three roots is going to be the maxillary first premolar. And this one's easy to remember if you just think about the number of roots that this tooth typically has. You know, it can, it, it can have one root with two canals or it can have, it can be bifurcated. And so just think about the maxillary first premolar being the one that's oftentimes bifurcated and then it'll help you to remember that it can sometimes be trifurcated. Okay, the facial cusp of the maxillary first premolar is offset to the distal. So here's the cusp right here and it's pushed towards the distal just a little bit. And so our that affects our next point. So this tooth has a longer mesial facial cusp ridge than distal facial cusp ridge. So we've got the cusp tip here and then we've got the cusp ridges here. Because this is offset to the distal, the mesial ridge is going to be a little bit longer than the distal. And it's typically um, the other way around for most of the teeth. And so that's a unique thing that they like to ask about. And also note that uh, the, the primary maxillary canine also has this feature. And this is going to be the premolar with the steepest cusp inclines. And so these cusp inclines are really kind of unique to this tooth. So not only does it have the steepest cusp inclines, but the mesial cusp is also longer than the distal. So for the maxillary first premolar, we're going to remember the the uniqueness of the, the cusp aspect of it, the cusp bridges, because they like to ask stuff about that. And the maxillary premolars, notice I said premolars, so that includes the first and the second, the lingual cusp is offset to the mesial. Um, so while the, the buccal cusp is offset to the distal, the lingual cusp is offset to the mesial. Yeah, the maxillary first premolar is the posterior tooth that has the greatest cervico-occlusal crown height. So going from CEJ to the tip of the crown, it's going to be the tallest tooth. And, you know, when you get a question like this, it might be easy to think that one of the molars is going to be um, the answer, but the maxillary first premolar is actually the, the tallest of the posterior teeth. The non-molar tooth having the sharpest demarcation between pulp chamber and canal. Okay, we're moving on to the maxillary second premolar. Now, um, you'll notice, I'll just quickly go through this. You know, there's only five points here on this tooth. So there's not too much that they ask about typically on this tooth. So if... So here I say, when in doubt between choices for maxillary premolars, choose the first premolar. Because, you know, there's just more that they can ask about with the, the maxillary first. 
All right, so maxillary second premolar. The size and position of the cusps are going to be more identical for this tooth than for the first premolar. So here's the second premolar. You'll notice the cusps are like, kind of like the same height, whereas this one, uh, the buccal cusp is about a millimeter higher. So these are offset, whereas these are the same. Uh, the maxillary second premolar has two cusps that are of equal height. And the maxillary second premolar um, is the most symmetrical posterior tooth. And that has to do again with these cusps being so similar in height. And then this is kind of like the big thing that they like to ask about with this tooth. Um, instead of a, a long central groove with a few supplemental grooves, it has a short central groove with lots of supplemental grooves that make it look wrinkly. So we've got um, the central groove and then these supplemental grooves are all kind of like long and it makes the tooth look wrinkly. So you might see that um, descriptor on the test. You know, if a tooth looks wrinkly, we're automatically going to think of the maxillary second premolar.